I guess this is the Check for Traps podcast. I'm Josh. And I am lamentably Aaron. And we have lots and lots to talk about. Um, we have... <laughs> we've just got back from seeing The Rise of Skywalker at a midnight screening. It is currently half past three in the morning. It's raining. The Tories are in. Brexit is happening. <laughs> Fucking hell, mate. The world seems a, a very strange place. Yeah, no. So this is our episode episode nine. I remember when I was a young young boy and I was like watching one of the prequels and I was like, man, I wonder if they'll ever get to the Roman numeral X. And uh, they did with this one in one X. And boy, was it not worth the twenty years it took me to get to that point. <laughs> what? Have, yeah, no, indeed. I mean, it's just um, what a waste of time. Uh, we're not gonna we're, we're gonna do a little spoiler free overview of the movie first and then we'll move into spoilers but we'll warn you but it's just um i want to preface this by saying as i often do so i don't want to sound like a broken record but me and aaron had nothing but goodwill for this movie and also actually i think i speak for both of us in saying that we felt quite bad for jj abrams because he had to conclude something where he didn't have control of the second part and obviously the second part clearly diverged catastrophically from what his overall plan for the trilogy seemed to be so not even dissing ryan johnson not even dissing anyone there's going to be very little of that it's just that this i knew that was going to be difficult so i was ready to see a movie that was a bit all over the place maybe but overall found its feet once he course corrected and that is not the movie i saw at all it was it was it was also not like any other bad movie i think i've ever really seen uh i was Hoping to watch a man, a professional, course correct from um, from you know from a, a mid flight diversion into <laughs> a sort of like perfect glide because the engine shot at this point, but yeah. you know like you can still glide it into landing, like in a like in episode three, Revenge of the Sith, another happy landing, <laughs> another happy um, landing. Um, and Fuck. so yeah, I was I yeah that's what I was hoping for. That's what you know I was perfectly willing to expect. I was willing to begrudge you know probably like you were up until a bad first half of the film which is quite remarkable for no other film really earns that it was all to play for this was the like like i think we said in the prediction video this is the the thing that will define how people remember last jedi force awakens this is the end of uh, nine films or 11 films if you include the stories uh People. Uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of whether I recommend you go and see it, I think that's a bit of a mute point for this film because people have probably are probably just going to go see it. Uh, that's the thing. It's like I have this weird thing where I know that people will find this just unpleasant, but I'm not going to stop them from seeing it. Like even 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 if I begged them, they'd still see yep. it. Just as I I, I was going to see it. it. Didn't matter what the reviews said. I was waiting to see how wrong they were. You know, I think that uh, one of the things I'd like to pick up on about this movie is that. Throughout the whole thing, people were laughing at it. At the end, while we were walking out, everyone was saying the same things. People were like, Indiana Jones 4, um, Last Jedi doesn't seem so bad. We both heard that from different people. It- I heard a man in the toilet saying that he was too pissed off to piss. <laughs> and I, I, I gave him my full brotherly support in that matter. <laughs> I think that the best way that I've thought to describe this movie, and it's very difficult to describe this movie, but before we get into spoilers, is that if you were like a teacher and, you know, your students handed you some essays back and, you know, you looked at the first one. So that's Force Awakens. You're like, bit derivative, whatever. Fine, I guess. Give it a C. You know, then you get The Last Shadow and you're like, this is really dumb. You know, you've got a lot of heart though, kid. You put that to the side. It gets maybe like a D or an E. And then you get this. Like, you've been reading your Dostoevsky. Yeah, yeah. You you, you don't understand it, but you certainly tried. So good power to you. But but (laughs) Rise of Skywalker is like, it's so bad that I'm not even angry about the people attached to it or who wrote it. Genuinely, I'm actually I'm actually concerned for them because I just had to watch this movie and that was bad enough, but if my name was attached to this, this, the the self-proclaimed closing of the finger quote Skywalker saga and it was this insane and this incomprehensible, and this unrelentingly poor. I, d- I genuinely, like, for the actors, I feel bad. I know why John Boyega's so pissed off. I even feel I feel bad for Daisy Ridley. I even feel bad for J.J. Abrams, because I was like, you know, I clearly... I had an opinion of him as being quite a competent guy. It's been dashed. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'd, I'd, call the, I'd call the parents of this kid. I'd be like, your child's retarded. Sorry. <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, so I have a, a comparison I want to make, but it does require spoilers, so fuck it. Let's consider this point spoilers. Spoiler territory, let's you go. Know what, you know what you think about this film, so uh, rev up some comment hate like you did for The Irishman. Of course. And let's get, let's get rolling. <laughs> let's do this. So, you, you said that you can't, you know, this is so unfeasibly bad that you can't imagine people as being associated with it. Now, this reminds me of a quote you said when I was positing the idea that Ray would be descended from Palpatine, where you said, I can't imagine someone so unimaginably, I don't know, someone so unimaginably evil that you can't imagine them having a family. Yep. And I feel like the two are, the two, the, there's, a, there's a parallel there. Oh, wow, yeah, definitely. <laughs> and lo and behold, that dumbass thing that I said was real. Remember when, when, when The Force Awakens came out, and then, so Ray's parents were the subject of many a video essay. And because yep. Star Wars video essays are a fucking a hundred a penny, fucking ten a penny, like it doesn't matter. Of course, it was like some more plausible things, maybe Razor Kenobi, maybe go as a Skywalker, whatever. It was all bad. But the the funniest one I saw was is Ray a Palpatine, and it was like the idea, yeah, that you know Palpatine was pooning off with people behind the scenes and bearing children was even funnier at the idea that. Obi Wan Kenobi had some kind of off-screen relationship. It was just so absurd, and that's it was just a funny name as well. Like, like saying like in this film, like two times it's uttered, "You're a Palpatine," and like Palpatine is like a guy's a guy's moniker. Yep. It's not his surname. Well, it is his surname, obviously, like in law. But, it's, but too, it it's too iconic. It's not like Kenobi. It's not even like Skywalker. And Skywalker's a dumb as fuck name. It's not even as bad as Star Killer. It's just a Palpatine. Palpatine. <laughs> Oh, that sounds the, like a bad fruit. That's the new guy. What's his name? Kenneth Palpatine. Ah, oh, Kenneth Palpatine, yeah. old Palps. Oh, Palpatine. How's he doing? Palps. Sheev. Who get? Who sleeps with a man called Sheev Palpatine? And especially <laughs> considering he's the he's the best thing about the prequels. Someone who enjoys being that singularly evil that much could not be distracted at the idea of, you know, bearing children because you know he was his own. He was his own legacy. He planned to live say, forever. <laughs> I want to cement a legacy, <laughs> but just in case immortality doesn't check out, I'm gonna poo. I want to, I want to settle down, <laughs> raise some evil children, Empress Ray Palpatine. Yeah, 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 man. Like, so yeah, sorry, sorry to dive in there, but that's just what I wanted to say. Oh, like, some, yeah, something un- unfathomably bad. We were so yeah, just to, to yeah to backtrack a little. So going into this film, people have been saying that it's convoluted people have been saying that you know it that it has a, a rocky start most of the reviews haven't gone much above three stars mm. with sort of like many of the the aggregator sites supporting that and in, the, and in the 50 60 mark and in the broadsheet newspapers but even even what i thought was damning with faint praise really fell short of how poor the movie was yeah i mean a sort of collective unease on the internet mm. about this because i don't think anyone or very few um reviews so far and bearing in mind we're very early in have struck sort of like the first blow the first blood on this yeah yeah uh, standing I feel around like if... caesar waiting to just yeah exactly to pieces some of the senators have missed <laughs> so, so some of them have uh, you know yeah one of them stabbed himself <laughs> um a couple of the ones that caesar bribed not to stab him have stabbed him anyway oh so my God. this is gonna be this is gonna be another um face that launched a thousand video essays you watch there's gonna be endless on this and i think there's gonna be Maybe even more than Last Jedi, because not only the end, but also just just so much stuff. Like, I'd say there's, like, twice as many plot beats and character yes. beats and everything beats than in Jedi, in Last Jedi. Like, yeah. Last Jedi, like, l- was boring because it laboured every point ridiculously. But, like, you know, like that casino planet taking 30 minutes. Like, nothing took 30 minutes in this. No, nothing, no nothing single at all. thing nothing took at 10 all. minutes in this. <gasps> I think I think the thing that I found, well, in, in the reviews, you know, because I really, I really felt like we prepped ourselves for this movie. The reviews kept saying... You know, obviously, it's trying to... It has to kind of carry the legacy of The Last Jedi, which I've, I think a lot of them implied unfairly burdened, burdened it, whatever they thought of The Last Jedi. And so I was expecting a kind of grace period of like, oh, you know, in, in this first maybe half hour or this first half of it, it's going to be hard because it's going to have to... They were like, oh, it's got to fit two movies of plot into one movie. And you know what? It was about halfway through the movie where I decided definitively and I said this to you that however difficult it may have been having some random person do the second part of your story that is no excuse for how poor this is like it was it was it could not be explained away by the fact that Ryan Johnson had killed Snoke or got rid of Luke or it was like this this is a bad movie in any universe like it's it's yeah I think 
I, you know, I think it's um, panic. I, yeah. I, I honestly, that's what I felt like I was looking at. Yes. I don't know why as well, because they ha- well, I do know why, because you know, this was unknown territory for everyone. Like, no, like, but I, I feel they could have approached the situation with a bit more sensibly, and that's an insane thing for me to mm. say about a multi-million dollar production. I guess they just got confident again. I, I guess they, I guess JJ, like you said, he said fuck it, and he did say fuck it. But I guess we took that as like a oh man, we get to see some actual creativity yes. but that, that we were we were sadly mistaken the, entirely it, mistaken that was the thing so jj abrams famously uh has said quite clearly and publicly that he had a fuck it moment when writing this movie and then just decided to go for it and yes as you said we took it as oh man he's just gonna because it's so spoiled already and i mean it was spoiled before the force awakens by the way i mean you know the prequels dashed any hopes of this being some kind of like consistently good saga but yeah, he was he was just going to do whatever he wanted, despite the fact it was a Star Wars movie. But no, like he didn't he didn't unload in any kind of interesting way. I mean, the fuck it turned out, you know, the translation we translated it all too late and found out that what he was saying was that he just didn't care about joining up anything. You know, having characters have discernible motivations. I mean, Pal- Palpatine Palpatine had no plan at all. He didn't even seem to know why he was alive. <laughs> and he was... Yeah, let's, so let's, let's hash this out, because he on. does reference this. So he says that, you know, I've fallen, so he he survives the fall mm. in this, like, weird, crippled GLaDOS state. I'm going to have to very quickly just interject there and say that Ian McDermott said that um, he had categorically died on the Death Star 2. So oh. yet again, he has a completely different opinion to whoever was actually writing the movie again right okay so some form of palpatine's essence and or body died and was possibly reborn mm. on what's it called it's called it's got a really dumb name oxiana or something it had x's in it i was like whatever yeah i t- i tell you what I, I was actually pretty annoyed at that because every every other planet in the disney trilogy has been fairly easy to remember and pronounce and i was like i'm not gonna remember this no. Because like I'd already stopped caring. I'm just gonna call it Oxo because that's what I, that's what it reminded me of. Oxo Cube, fine. Exactly. So the Oxo, so like he's been re- reborn on Oxo, and re- so ha- having gone to the ma- seemingly the large effort of being reborn, he wants Ray to kill him because he's decided to take literally the idea that what the Jedi are in all, every Jedi is in you, every Sith is in you. So I guess it's like this gradual concentration of the Force yeah. into a person when there are less people, which goes directly against the last jedi and mm. it's not the foot there's definitely is one of a hundred examples of going against the last jedi he his plan is to be killed and then be absorbed into ray but presumably not to have a controlling stake within ray at no. this point presumably he'll be sharing it with darth revan and co indeed uh in the back seat never forget halfway through he changes his mind when he realizes that kylo ren and ray are a special twofer that only comes around once every couple of millennia and so that means that instead of being killed, he can kill them both. <laughs> suck, suck them into himself, and yep. Emperor Palpatine I, will be fully I, reborn. But it was like I guess it's I guess it's because like maybe one of them wouldn't have had enough Force juice hmm. in them to, to 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 quench him. It was I guess he knew that implicitly. It's a lot like but... Doctor Sleep that moment <laughs> to try and pick apart like the logistics of this movie as a fool's errand because they clearly didn't care at all. But he obviously mm-hmm. had this fleet in deep space um do you ever wonder who like the people manning those ships were because i, d- I tell you what, i wondered where they bought their groceries from yeah that was my uh i was like oh man. i know and i know it's not like they're picky but like no this is like they call it like the unknown region or whatever but i was like is there i would have loved a bit more about the unknown region like yeah is there a agri agrable land like what where what who's yeah who's manning this fleet there's so many people on board, they're all fiendishly loyal to the Emperor. But Sith troopers be... as well. Yeah, exactly. At the very beginning, Palp says that this will be the final order. Mm. And I was like, oh, that's a pretty funny like play on words. Yeah, and then yeah. someone else called it the final order, and I was like, alright, no, we're sticking to that then. That's, uh, <laughs> that's happening. The, in- the entire thrust of this movie, I mean, I, I often just found myself throwing my arms down and turning to you laughing i was laughing a lot in this movie like a crazed person yeah. but Tony to you and be like i don't even, don't even know what's happening and because it was it was like okay so the movie starts it says the dead speak explanation mark that was when i knew that we'd fucked up like the first oh moment of the movie was that stupid that i was laughing at it but the cruel i yeah the the, the cruel was mad i honestly because you... did no one think to second draft the title crawl of the final star wars movie because they it didn't did. 
do you think they thought it was a bit like cutesy in seventies, like a, like a really like schlocky sci-fi, like the dead speak? I can't, I can't see into it, mate. That's that's the thing that I find the weirdest. I can't, I can't answer your question. I don't know. You can't imagine a creative intent nope. behind nope. these decisions. No, none of it. Because that was, you know, he was in like deep space. Uh, what, th- what, from what I understood, from what was clearly being regurgitated from press packets in reviews, because the movie was not this comprehensive, was that he had appeared in like deep space. And that everyone would be looking for Palpatine. But Kylo Ren sees him in like the first couple of shots of the movie. So he's already there. And... Kylo Ren makes some fucking phenomenal progress, might I say. Like, uh, given that it took us a whole film to find Luke Skywalker, like, yeah. he drags Palpatine down in like a single, like, uh, th- like 60 second montage. Like, bra- bravo. And that, you know, the, the rebellion are trying to find Palpatine, but the First Order know where he is. And also, going to Palpatine seems like a bad idea because he has a fleet of ships that will i mean the movie kind of makes me feel like they cannot be defeated so i would have thought that you have to send in just ray alone to beat palpatine but no i mean they all just they all just go there when they find it which wasn't exactly that exciting a moment they get to the place where they showed us right at the beginning of the movie probably should have waited to show it to us but whatever and then you know a million ships pop pop out of hyperspace and then we have a a completely just not compelling space battle with no stakes i mean while it was happening i was just wondering what 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 direction is this going to go in what what (laughs) what there's a there's a really funny moment i think again like the the um the overhangs from the last jedi is like poe darren wasn't interested with anything in the last jedi and upon Leia's death, spoilers, mm. uh, he is immediately promoted to acting general. <laughs> yep. And I was like, well, I guess there's no one else. They, so. they also made they made a point of him speaking to Finn and saying, I can't do this alone, so I want to do it with you. And yep. I say this only because that was a moment, like many moments, that wasn't dwelled on, but it was also never referred to again. Like, they didn't show the two of them going in as a co-generals. Yeah. And, and no, w- that, which could have been good. Scene. Anything that happened that was bad, at least in the first half or you know, three quarters was so momentary, like so fleeting that like it couldn't even make you that angry because they just jumped onto something else. And I, I mean, for a little while, I was almost charmed by some of it. I liked that parts of it, you know, Poe kind of became, Poe's been three completely different people, by the way, in his movies. In this one, he was Indiana Jones for most of it. And then- Yeah, they, with a dark past. Yes. And then they also did Indiana Jones, you know, heal the- Christ wound in the belly. There was there were loads of weird what I felt like were Indiana Jones callbacks, but Jesus. <laughs> well, they even had a guy who looked like him appear somewhere near the the end of the middle of the first yeah, act. I was, I, 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 I've seen that guy before. All of this crap that I always avoid watching. All of these essays that are recommended to me on YouTube that are just like, oh, can you believe how bad it is? Can you believe the leaks? I'm like, look, the problem with these people is even if something in Star Wars is bad, they will make it seem a hundred times worse than it actually is just because, like, bogging on Star Wars is, like, their bread and butter. And I don't want to be that person. But this time, they were all right. Like, you know, when people read into Mark Hamill saying things about, like, The Last Jedi, I mean, I know that he wasn't massively pleased with it, but I think people have overblown the negativity that he may have felt towards it. Or at least that's what I used to think, because, no, I mean, he's not a moron and he must must hate this movie and even him being in it he looked like he was having a bad time Um, yeah he didn't seem to have because yeah at least he like summoned some reserves of energy uh bless his soul for the last jedi he definitely he barely did for this like i said he looked like fucking slavoj zizek for most of it he did and like he's not in it for long he's just obviously he's just a ghost i don't know i was expecting him to be in it for more actually leia is something we need to mention talk about actually leia so this was like other than the title crawl and the like fucking blistering first couple of minutes obviously it's like no secret no one's been hiding it that uh leia is made entire leia's part in this film and it's quite a part is mm. made entirely of reconstituted footage from the force awakens mostly from the force awakens and last jedi but yeah mostly mm. force awakens a lot of uh and there's a lot of transposed shots the lighting looks really bad she doesn't ever look like she is actually in the surroundings that she's in um which was very very weird and noticeable but also more importantly is there it's that weird uncanny valley effect where you know that someone isn't responding to the people yes. who are there, both in terms of their their body language and the things they say and how they say it. Yeah. Because I, I assumed it was going to be poorly done. I was actually looking forward to it being poorly done, but it was so sloppy that I couldn't even 
really take much pleasure in it after no. the first time it happened and because it was, it was just like poor. It was straight. <laughs> it was straight away in which the dead speak yeah. indeed. <laughs> um, yeah, the dead speak. Yeah, the fucking Christ. The, I mean, the whole film was the dead speaking, wasn't it? Like, yes. The Han Solo, Luke Skywalker, Billy D. Williams. Billy D. Williams, who mate. Was functionally dead, I think. I think if they'd got a mortician in, he would have declared him dead. Oh. Fucking Wedge Antilles. Wedge Antilles, that was. <laughs> the man who famously never died, it should have died in this film. <laughs> I mean, it was. First of all, a lot of people keep saying there's a lot of fan service in this movie. I don't really see individual fan moments of fanservice just supposed to make you happy right yeah, like, yeah I, mean, I mean you know I think it was just well, there's one really big one for me I think go on which was that medal that, that was definitely fan service that was yeah, yeah, that, okay, was, that was that was, was kind of classy fan service actually I, I, I almost almost if, if I hadn't had sat through the entire of the rise of Skywalker I might have actually quite appreciated See, that felt, moment yeah I thought that was earned. You, you know what I thought was really dumb but this was especially when I was still on the movie side I was like you can get through this rise of Skywalker but when they just you know, they flew some junk ship up to a Star Destroyer and then got off and just started shooting stormtroopers and then just running through hallways and shooting stormtroopers and shooting stormtroopers and shooting stormtroopers and then just Ray just went off to, like, fucking Kylo Ren's souvenir room. And, yeah, but the, the thing is, is I was like, every single time in Star Wars, even in the prequels, they end up on a ship they're not supposed to be on, stealth to the maximum. And if it's not stealth to the maximum, it's like in Revenge of the Sith where, you know, they get in, they're immediately, you know, they're in elevators. It's that there's kind of a sense of peril. Um, <laughs> it's just, and in, you know, A New Hope, they have to hide on the ship. They have to sneak around. And by the time they are being chased around by stormtroopers, it's like, oh dear, you're really fucked up because you're on a Star Destroyer. And on in The Force, in the Force Awakens, you know, they had to disguise himself. He had to pretend to be his prisoner. They got off. It was, it was perilous. And then even in The Last Jedi, you know, Finn had to pretend that he was still in the Empire. In this, they just, they fucking fly in. They jump off the ship. They start shooting people. You're in a hangar bay on a Star Destroyer. It's basically a kill zone. You walk off that ship, you die. Trying to echo those lo those lovely scenes in the um, the original trilogy where, like, there is a plucky rebel force, like, mustering its last resources mm. to fly off somewhere, but... It basically, uh, I, I basically was a running joke in my mind that they they all had the same like bag, and so I just they just seemed to be transporting this bag from location to location to location, yeah. <laughs> and it was very strange as they like yeah and they were all like sort of like patting each other on the back and getting ready and shipping out and hugging and stuff because they, they you know this is the last mission but I, I don't care about any of them yeah. not like I cared about like the Hoff base or the Endor base, and I don't think that's. No, yeah, that, exactly. That's because this film, this film lacked a certain humanity in its characters, and it tried to imbue them. Like you know, they had Carrie Fisher's daughter there again. They had Neon Nub. They had a man who wasn't mm. Admiral Akbar, but had been clearly brought in to fill his shoes. Uh, um, yeah, no, they had a, they had fucking Mary. Was it? It's Mary rather than Pippin. Yeah. What? What? Yeah. Oh, they oh, had oh Mary. Okay. so not only Mary. So Mary Doc Brandybuck. Like the thing is, is when the movie was over and he smiled at Oscar Isaac. I was like, yeah, he's smiling at him because it's like, ah, isn't it funny how I just wasn't really in this movie for any reason at all? So I wonder what kind of cutting room floor shit he was in. And also, Matt Smith. So, Matt Smith... Oh, where, was, where was Matt Smith? I didn't was, see him. He wasn't in it, mate. He wasn't in oh. the movie. And, like, the thing is, is it, they, they announced him as being in the cast, like, right after The Last Jedi. And then... There was all this stuff where they were like, oh, he's been removed from the cast list, so obviously it's a super secret role. Loads of speculation. No, he just wasn't in the movie. You know what I loved as well? I'm sure you've seen, obviously, the memes of, but the uh, the Richard E. Grant uh, Instagram story or whatever, where he said that he's just seen The Rise of Skywalker the first time. He's like, I've just seen The Rise of Skywalker. I fist pumped the air. I, it, nothing, nothing in the world prepares you for this. I cheered. It's the greatest. It resolves everything. How much money... In fact, no, not even how much money did they pay Rich D. Grant. They either kidnapped some of his relatives and put guns <laughs> to their head, or they burned out a small part of Rich D. Grant's brain. Because like, I'm not saying he's the smartest guy in the world. I don't know him. But the only time in this movie where I was thinking about like punching the air and cheering was when it was finally over because <laughs> <laughs> i would never have to go back oh. to it again and i will by the way is... i will never watch this again it was it was oh, a really? fucking this was a sniff my dick like insult to my intelligence it was literally like no come on come on josh come come sniff my dick it's like no jj please i really don't want to do it it's like no no okay, snip snip my cocks snip, snip my it cock does like that uh, sharon stone thing where he like uncrosses his legs yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> Shit. Well, I mean, yeah, he does nothing in this film. Well, you mean you? Did you see the bit where he shot Hux? Yes, I did, and that was a. Uh, cool. That's you know you, what? You... I'm gonna make one more one more point that I think sums up how you got just me. Me. That, that, that Richard E. Grant. I'd not actually seen that story. That Richard E. Grant thing was great. Oh, oh, really, I'm gonna stick that out. It's um. I'll send it to you. No, this th- th- this this movie. So they revealed that Hux was a spy, which was leaked shortly after The Last Jedi. I wasn't sure if I believed it. This reveal happened while I was in the bathroom. Aaron told me that everyone laughed when it got revealed. Now, this sums Biggest up... Biggest laugh of the night. <laughs> big, <laughs> big, big. But, yeah, the, the, you know, the, the complete disrespect that this movie had for its own moments is that, you know, Richard E. Grant's, you know, general fucking evil pride or whatever says, oh, we found the spy and shoots Hux. Now, there's not even a close-up. He shoots Hux. Hux is in the background. Like in the in the he's blurry in the background. He shoots him twice with a blaster, and he says we found he just the spy. Slides across the floor. And, he slides across the very shiny first and, floor floors. And they don't they don't cut to Hux. This character was in all three of these movies. You know he had, a, he had like massive speeches in both of them. They don't yep. even show him on the floor. Four planets. Was, they, yeah, they don't they don't even show him on the floor. Go, I did it for the resistance. It's literally just like, haha, isn't it funny that we did that? Anyway, moving on, and that was that was just the whole thing. It's just clipping, yeah. clipping along. All all I have to sum it up is, you know, what, what I said earlier. It's just every, anyone who was in it, I feel bad for them, and even the people who wrote it, I feel bad for them, and I feel bad for Ian McDermott being dressed you feel up. Feel bad for like Chris Terrio. Yeah, you know what I do. I feel bad for oh, him man. because you know he's he's a fucking loser and a hack, and it's just you know it's like he'll never do anything good, and everyone will unanimously declare his works terrible. Feel bad for feel bad for Daisy Ridley because the thing is, is Daisy Ridley, who was really bad in the Last Jedi, is uh was really back on form, even though her character was completely boring. Uh, d- you know, I didn't care at all. I thought that she was performing very well. Like J.J. Abrams really directs her well. It's a shame that mm-hmm. it came to nothing. It was it was like it was like a joke. I, t- I tell you what, mate. Like my whole life, whenever these big blockbusters are coming out, and this sounds ridiculous, but it's true. Like because what's going to happen in them occupies my thoughts so much because the trailers are always so vague. Like the Dark Knight Rises or the Force Awakens or this, right. um, like the big event ones. I yep. always have like a dream in like the weeks leading up to it where I'll be watching the movie, and obviously because I'm dreaming, it's completely batshit. And while I'm in the dream, I don't know I'm dreaming. I'm thinking, wow, this movie's terrible. Because it's like a dream movie that just makes no sense. Then I wake up and I'm like, oh, thank God that wasn't the real thing, you know. <laughs> Except, and yep, th- th- okay. That's how I felt when I was watching this movie, right, even uh. right up until it ended. I was like, it can't actually be the real thing. It's it's not. Well, that's unfortunate because you're currently in a dream podcast. <laughs> so, uh, we're gonna have to call this one off now because you've, uh, yeah, you, all our dream listeners won't like you referencing the fact that this is a dream. So nice work. I suppose my point. No, yeah, that, I, I wake I, up and the real movie's even worse. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, the real the real movie actually every print of it got destroyed, unfortunately. <laughs> so at least you got to see a crazy dream version. Uh one is I I sent you a lovely list of the the list of voice actors um in this that uh the voices of Jedi past as it's listed yeah, in the credits. May Swindon um, and I wanna Ashoka. say that so from Clone uh, Wars as well. Yeah, so Ashoka from Clone Wars, and that's all. That's one of the ones I wanted to talk about. Other than the fact Samuel L. Jackson's back, which is fucking hilarious. Mm. I'm sure Samuel L. J- I'm sure Mace Windu is very invested in the uh, race, race journey. Definitely. But I, 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 so there's three I want to raise, but mainly Ahsoka. So Ahsoka was being big teased by J.J. Abrams earlier in the week. He said like fans of Ahsoka want to check out this film, and obviously like the Clone Wars is a very dedicated fan base who immediately jumped on that. Thought that was really interesting because. Mm wasn't really a big thing for Ahsoka. Like, I think I, I isolated one piece of her voice, maybe two, but that's the other thing I want to say, is I don't think the other one was her, because I'm pretty sure it was Alayla Secura, um, who is the uh, the woman who dies in the Order 66 uh, oh, montage. Okay. She dies on Felucia. And she's uh, in that deleted the, scene as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, yeah, the, cl- the clone troopers, like, unload to her, uh, like, un- yeah, fucking destroy mm. uh, in the... Um, the tropical planet yep. and then there's Luminara Undili whose canonical death is in Star Wars Rebels um, and like yeah just a com- I, I don't know why these people are here I guess no. they just needed a broad cross section of Jedi and these were the people who were available I was, um, I was actually, I mean, I was kind of looking forward to just some, like, actual Hayden Christensen. <laughs> I wanted to, yeah, I, I'm really, I'm really do. I mean, it was lovely hearing his voice, mm. and it was nice to, yeah, but it was, yeah, I was expecting, like, a bit more from that. Maybe could have subbed out one of the many <laughs> subplot side characters with 
some closure for the Skywalkers. Um, which brings me to my last, my last big hurrah, my, my fucking bugbear. So, uh, I, I, when I saw this in, when I saw The Force Awakens in 2015, I immediately called and assumed that Ray and Kylo Ren were going to get to get together by the last one because they're Star Wars films and they're full of love. Of course, they seemed like they, you know, they had the most interesting dynamic even in that first one. Um, and obviously this is this is rumbled on up until tonight where it's all ended mercifully uh, and <laughs> it happens <laughs> it happens for about four seconds mm. and he puts so he has the biggest oh, I tell you what I was so, ha- I was so happy for him he had the biggest grin on his face just after that kiss and then he dies <laughs> and then he, he fades away this is the weirdest that's the weirdest thing ever that was that was ridiculous I don't know what that's supposed to tell me. I was thinking about it, like I depersonalized myself from it because irrespective of what I would have wanted, which was basically just that, except he doesn't fade away. Yep. And also like Leia fades away with him, like the corpse has just been waiting for her son to die. Is she like escorting him back across the line? Again, I don't even I don't even um, think they know what that meant. No, exactly. It's just so it's just pointless symbolism in a in a fucking saga full of it. But mm-hmm. yeah, no, um we're now pointless because it's been finished in such an unsatisfactory way. Um so yeah, he he's dead. Ray is alone again. She adopts the name Skywalker for some reason. I, I guess because she feels a close affinity towards the Skywalkers. Yeah. Um, and then she's alone. She, she starts the, the, the series alone. She and, and on a sand planet, she ends the film alone with on a sand planet. Except this is Tatooine everyone's this dead. Time. Yeah, and everyone's dead. <laughs> and she, yep. she never put out for Finn, but never addressed that she wasn't going to do that. And uh, Fucking hell! Who was that person? Who was that person by those well, by woman. the house? Yeah, it's just like, oh, people aren't normally round here. What's your name? I, it's like Jesus I, Christ. I don't think that was anyone. I think that was just there. Someone had to ask her name so she could say her name was Skywalker. Which was tell important. Tell you what, it sh- tell you what it should have been. Should have been a black outline of a handsome, barrel-chested, mulleted man <laughs> uh, saying, "What's your name?" And then it could have been left up to interpretation. Ben Aaron. Go go on. It should have been the charred skeletons of Uncle Owen and Aunt Viv, uh, like clacking their dead teeth together, saying, Oh, hi. What's your name? (laughs) Hey, Fronzy. Hey. Like the skeletons in Army of Darkness. I'm fucking finished with this, mate. I don't even know what else to say. Do you have anything else? Um. Yeah, I just like uh, I mean, I guess the obviously the, the last thing I want to uh, pitch to you, and I want to pitch it to you in this enraged state. So forgive me my uh, my <laughs> indulgence. But uh, <laughs> what, what happens next? <laughs> uh, what what happens next is I'm making this is this has been a bad year for movies. Like the, the, this really. I got what I asked for. I got more Star Wars movies, and like they've annoyed me so much. But like, a, like more than I could have ever possibly imagined. I don't know where this franchise goes from here, but like clearly Disney don't know what to do with it either because they've cancelled the fucking trilogies. Whatever does happen, as a matter of principle, I'm fucking not on board, mate. I got to get back in the independent cinemas. Got to start watching like real shit again. You know, shit that people put their heart and soul into. Shit that's shot on a fucking potato. Like whatever. It's just. I don't That's care true. what happens now. <laughs> like this... New Year, The Lighthouse. <laughs> yes, indeed. Can't wait um, for The Lighthouse. Life is um, too yeah, short, no, man. Fuck. But my prediction for this, in a slightly less enraged state than you, which is fun, I'm enjoying this actually, Yeah. Um, is that I, between this and the massively positive reception to The Mandalorian, I think we are going to see a, not even necessarily a pivot more towards Star Wars TV, though that will definitely be part of it, but I think you're going to see Nathan Filiano, whatever he's called, in the John Favreau sure. uh, faction of uh, Lucasfilm probably take over. And again, like like you said, I want to state that I'm not saying this in like the weird conspiracy YouTuber way yeah, that yeah. people do, where they talk about like you know Kathleen Kennedy being crucified, <laughs> yeah. their own personal their own personal ple- like pleasure project like i don't care what happens to captain kennedy i don't care what happens to all of them we're all fucking millionaires in my books yeah yeah just like some of them happen to wear cowboy hats and read star wars books Indeed. and so they the fact the fact that people are gonna be the fact that the start the star wars thing that people are gonna remember in this year 
the the end of the Star Wars saga is a puppet on a TV show over any aspect of the finished product. That that is pretty. That is that is all, that tells you all you need to know about the future of Star Wars under the Disney Corporation, in my opinion. I think it's going to be a series of very intense talks about what happened to this trilogy i think this might be the the last of the goodwill i mean it's certainly the last of your goodwill yeah yeah no I mean, it's, you know, <laughs> it's probably the last of mine <laughs> fucking it, just just as a matter of principle it's just like i can't I can't believe that anyone involved was trying if they were trying and this is what they produced i'm scared for them so yeah no no more no more thank you <laughs> I'll just, I'll just say that, you know, walking in, I was like, however bad this is, if it is terrible, worst case scenario, I get to see Palpatine, and Palpatine's just the most hilariously evil screen villain ever. Like, it's comical. So, you know, at mm. least that will be funny. But no, even that, it was just, he... He, he, he didn't do anything, didn't, really, didn't, did he? He didn't do anything, he didn't say anything funny, he didn't... No. You know, he, he said do it, like he said, yeah, yeah well, that was about it. He said do it once, yep. Fucking... Um, and then he, yeah, he forced lightning the sky. But he didn't even really like um, engage in a fight with our antagonist. Like he either was like white walking them or mm. he died. I can't even remember. Oh yeah, he died because she. Oh, that was dumb. She, she died because she did like the the gladiator crossed swords march towards yeah. thing. Yeah, that was a really dumb way to to beat the final bad guy. Dumb film. Yeah. Very dumb film. There you go. We got we got the fan fiction that we deserved. Uh... Kylo Ren didn't die. <laughs> no. Raylo was right all along and it was all fucking pointless. <laughs> and that's us. Um <laughs> yeah. Um, no, yeah, I yeah. I mean that's that's a, like I said, a fitting end. I think it's it's good because it will it will make people answer in a way, you know. I'm always glad JJ didn't bail them out, I guess, mm. but <laughs> we have been checked for traps. Thank you very much. That for was listening. Star Wars. That was <laughs> The Rise of Skywalker. Thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs>